Hi, I'm Dale Pinnock, The Medicinal Chef. I'm going to create a dish for you that's pretty much become my signature dish. And this time of year, it really, really is top of everyone's list. And that's my flu fighting soup. So starting off, just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil just going here. I know everyone says don't cook with extra virgin. I always do, for the simple reason, there's a few more antioxidants in the extra virgin, that's all. You don't lose a great deal in cooking. So I've got about a tablespoon, give or take. First ingredient to go in, four cloves of garlic. So maybe not the best thing to, to have if you're gonna be social at any point. Garlic is amazing as an antiviral. The oils in here, the thing that give it that really, really strong, pungent aroma, can only be removed from the body via one root and one root alone. You can't excrete them via the urine, they don't come out the other way, they have to evaporate and be breathed out. As you breathe them out and they move through the mucous membranes, they can actually kill viruses that are hanging around there. So, bring that straight in. Next thing to go in is fresh ginger root. It's about an inch piece of ginger peeled, cut quite coarsely. It's all going to be blended anyway, you don't have to worry. Ginger's really, really powerful natural anti inflammatory. So if you think about it, when you've got like a cold or flu or feeling really bunged up, that bunged up feeling isn't because you know, you're full of mucus. Very often, it's because the mucus membranes have become inflamed as the immune system is actually dealing with the infection. So the oils in ginger, the thing that give it the spicy flavor, can actually interrupt certain elements of the inflammatory response. So it can actually take inflammation down quite quickly. Got that down. Next thing to go in is green chili. Now I've used like one of these types of chilies, so just like a, an average sized chili. Leave the seeds in, because the seeds is where the hot component is. That compound that gives it the heat, something called capsaicin works as a decongestant. I'm sure you've had that experience where you've eaten something really, really spicy and all of a sudden your nose runs. That's that in action. Also pretty good for your circulation as well. So this time of year when it gets really, really cold, can actually help to stimulate circulation to the extremities. Cold fingers and toes, really helps to warm it up. Red onion going in. There's one large red onion there. All of the onions are natural kind of antibiotics really. But red onions have got the um, additional clout of actually being a little bit anti-inflammatory as well. So all of those aromatics are in there. Put it on the heat. Whenever you're using aromatic things like garlic and ginger and chilies, always make sure you season it right at the beginning. Because if you don't, those flavors will just get lost. You'll smell them, but you won't taste them. You won't get the complexity of flavor. So put a bit of sea salt. Right, so basically we've sauteed that mixture for about four or five minutes, just until the onion's nice and soft, and then it's in with the next lot. So, next key ingredient to go in, these little devils, shiitake mushrooms. These things are incredible for the immune system. They contain a very, very unique large sugar called a polysaccharide, which has been shown in hundreds of studies to actually elevate white blood cell count. Obviously the white blood cells being the army of the immune system, the higher your white blood cell count, the better position you're in to actually deal with infection. So I've got one punnet of those just kind of coarsely chopped. Don't have to do anything fancy with them. Next thing to go in, goji berries. These are probably one of the most overhyped ingredients on the face of the earth. If you believe every single thing that you read, they'd make you fly or walk on water or whatever. All the hype aside, there are some interesting compounds in here. Similar to the shiitake mushrooms, they contain a very, very unique polysaccharide that will actually elevate white blood cell count a little bit. But they also contain a mineral called germanium, which is proven to be quite difficult to get in a diet. What germanium does is actually regulate the activity of something called a CD4 cell. A CD4 cell is to the immune system what a conductor is to an orchestra. It's basically regulating different aspects of the immune response, telling the immune system what to do and when. So all that from a little berry. Got about, about 200 to 250 grams should be enough. And then the final ingredient, we've got a couple of large sweet potatoes. Now you see that beautiful orange flesh there? That orange color is given by a compound called beta carotene. It's an antioxidant, it's the plant form of vitamin A, but more importantly, it's also an anti-inflammatory. So, you know, sore throat, blocked up nose, all of those things come from inflammation. So anything you can do to ease that is gonna make you feel a lot better. I'm leaving the skins on because, you know, it ups the fiber content 
But a lot of you know a lot of the nutrients, a lot of the minerals and other other things that are good for you are found just under the skin anyway. So just give them a quick scrub and that's enough. So we've just got a nice, nice plain vegetable stock. Nothing exciting. Put enough of it in to just cover the ingredients. Remember, you can always add more, but if you put too much liquid in, you can't take it away, and then the soup will be really, really watery. And that's it, we're just gonna let it simmer for maybe 20 minutes tops. You just need to simmer it until the sweet, sweet potato is nice and soft, and it's able to blend, really. So this has basically been simmering away for about 20 minutes tops. Just simmer it until the sweet potato gets nice and soft and then we're just going to blend it. Blend it really, really smooth. Right, so that's the kind of consistency you want. Make sure all the bits have gone lovely and smooth. The starch in the sweet potato will make it so velvety. So now we've got that lovely smooth texture, it's ready to serve. Perfect. See that amazing smooth texture, beautiful colour and it's just got such a complex flavour, it's wonderful. It's just sweet, it's velvety, you get the spice at the end, it's fantastic. The thing is, if you've found that you've made like quite a lot of it and you've got a fair bit left over, it makes a really fantastic base for a curry. So you could cook up like some, some chickpeas and spinach and onions or meat or whatever you fancy, add a few spices like cumin and turmeric and then pour this over the top, actually use it like the liquid base mix it through and it creates an incredible curry, almost like a dance sack. Lovely, lovely stuff. Enjoy.